All right, our model is finished. Uh, it's gone through our data set and it has produced actually 168 different models. And what we have here is the uh, information, the metrics to compare them. So what is this number here? Classification error is the percent of times that something was misclassified. So we're looking at churn, so it's the percent of times when someone did churn, but they um, were, the, the algorithms thought that they did not, or when they did not churn, and the algorithm thought that they did. So it captures both any time that there's a miss. Um, overall, you can see we ran what's it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different types of models, and they're all looking around the same. Um, so our classification error ranges from 14 to 20. Um, it's not too bad. Uh, they give us little indicators here on how fast they are. So logistic regression, which is a very simple tool, um, did its, made its model. Um, I clicked on it and it took me there um, in 37 seconds. And then we can compare that to random forest, which took nine minutes to make. So logistic regression was much faster. The one with the lowest performance, uh, or the lowest performance, with the best performance, um, was the deep learning model. So that's a neural network. Uh, this is what you hear about in the news a lot. And let's see what this metric is. Um, fastest scoring time, decision tree. So we can look at this, we can sort them, we can look at how much variation there is. Uh, this graph over here shows how long it took. The reason that random forest took so long is that one model is created for each of these and then 160 models were created for this one. So it actually does a lot more models. Uh, we have the, the value, so that 15%, and then we have a margin of error. So that's what the little eye looking thing here is. Um, so these are the same kind of things we saw with our descriptive statistics. Um, we can change this metric, so if we don't care about the errors, we want to care about um, our F measure. That's a combination of our recall and precision. Um, so take a look at this and see in this version, deep learning still wins. Um, we can look at precision, which is how many times was it right that you called it right. Um, and gradient boosted trees does the best for that, but the opposite of precision is recall. How many times when it's wrong did you call it wrong? Um, so just some different ways, depending on what you care about. Sometimes you care more about false positives and sometimes you care about limiting false negatives. So we've developed all these models and now we can go in and we can look at them individually. So let's look at like Bayes. Um, we can change attributes how much is your balance, what's your credit score. We can get a sense of how much they contribute to the overall model. So geography is an important feature for the Bayes model. But most importantly is this simulator. This simulator is going to um, predict where someone falls. So a value of one would mean that they, um, they churned, I think. It doesn't, it should be that they didn't churn. Um, and this is a little odd, but range two would be that they um, did churn. So you can see right now, this person who follows the average um, is estimated to not churn. If I change the tenure from five down to zero, and I change the credit card to zero, um, the credit score I'll drop down at the bottom, you can see it's changing my probability Say that they're not a member, they have um, a balance. Let's see how, if this is really old, um, they're 92, oldest in the data set. Um, the estimated salary is, um, doesn't make that much difference. So now, based on these characteristics, the program predicts that this person will churn. Um, there's a 76% chance that that person will change. Uh, so age, 
Let me... um, so you can just see as I move this back and forth, it's making different predictions in real time. So if we have a new person, we um, are given data about someone who is from Germany, they have two products, they've been with us for five years, they have a card, they are a millennial, their credit score is 700, they are an active member, their balance is, let's say, 50,000, um, their age is 30, and their estimated salary is 60,000. Um, so that is an individual, and our model predicts that they will not churn. Okay. What's great is that this can be done in real time. So this can be connected to your systems so that if someone, say, applies for um, a credit card, you could take all these things that you know about them and immediately get a, an estimate. Right? So you can see with the media as I just move this up and down. Um, let's find one that moves. Uh, the, get this direct change. So we could actually put this model into what we would say production so it could be used um, that way. Each of these models is going to have different weights um, and function slightly differently. So in this one, geography is more important. Um, but they all have these simulators. You can go through and you can see you know, what makes more of a difference for being um, in the category for churn or not churn. Uh, if we say it's a female, how does that change the likelihood that they churn? Um, so what a random forest is, decision tree is just, we can actually look at the decision tree, I think. Yeah, so this is the decision tree, it's um, zoom out. So you start here, number of products. If they have more than three, then you uh, then they're automatically in churn. Uh, if they have less than three, then you check their credit score. And then you kind of go through, you'll see it goes all the way down. Lots of questions get asked here. And sometimes the same question could ask more than once. Um, so age, here's the example, age is asked here, and then it's asked again here. Um, what the random forest does is it actually created, as I said, 100, 140 of these models. Each one of these is different. Um, slicing, so this one balances the first node, this one number of products, this one balance again, this one's credit score. Um, so a lot of different models, and then it does a, um, a poll to see which, how did every model show up, and then as the... Um, Whatever value gets the most votes each, uh, from each of these is whatever um, the guess is. The gradient boosted trees is just a, a different way of doing decision trees. Um, slightly different parameters here. Uh, you can see again, it, it ran 30 different models. Um, bunch of different things here. And, um, if we had this hooked up, we could hit deploy, and then we could um, turn this into, um, connect it to our website um, so that somebody would go to the website and be able to interact with that model. They, maybe we don't even know it, um, but what they do on the model is immediately being tested by this and then classified in real time. Right, and that is how we can use a rapid miner for classification.